when is the best time to launch a new product? Now, if you're watching this video, you probably have a product and you're just trying to figure out when should I release this thing? How should I get it out the door so I make the most profit? I'm actually gonna break down in this video exactly the timeframes that I use to make sure that when I launch, it's actually worth something to me and my wallet. Let's dive in. About a year and a half ago, there was a product I wanted to put out there and I was super excited about it. I was like, oh my gosh, this thing's gonna be amazing. And I did something similar at first as what most entrepreneurs do. They build the product and then they're like, let's just put it out there tomorrow. That's the best way to fail, right? The best way to fail on the internet, especially in the internet, is if you finish your product on Tuesday to put it out to the internet on Wednesday. Now, I'm not saying to not start selling as fast as you can, but literally the difference between a five figure, six figure and seven figure launch is time. Now you've typed in here trying to figure out when is the best time to launch a brand new product here, how to put this product out the door. And that's a very powerful question to ask. So what I did, I'm so glad I caught myself. What I did is I pushed back the launch. That's step number one. Okay. As soon as your product is done, push back the launch at least two to three months. That's not just my number that comes from a lot of yesteryear's gurus as well. Okay. What I did is I pushed back the launch several months and I decided that I would, instead of just put it out the door, I would create like a mini event right in front of it. So I started by creating this little mini event and started, okay, uh, you know what? Uh, how can I create like a mini event that I can sell this product on the back of? That way I get all this attention and all this noise that actually sets up and rolls into the major thing all along. So we pushed back the actual launch. We pushed back the launch and we started putting together um, this new event now right in front of it. And then I was like, well, how do I, okay, if this is the thing I wanna sell all along and I got this little event that I'm gonna do right in front of it, how do I get people to this event? Then we went to another person's event and promoted the fact that we have our event coming up, which promoted the fact that we have the launch coming up. It's all true story, okay? And then we were like, well, wait a second. If this is the product that we're gonna launch and we have a mini event, and then we're like, we get people to that event by going to someone else's event, how do we get people to know that we're at that event? And then we were like, well, let's go back. Okay, this ended up stringing together over six months. Now, you don't need to go and say, oh man, Steve Larson, I'm gonna go six months, that's a long, that is a long time, okay, that's a long time. Just know that most of the time, most of the product launches that I'm involved in, they're usually a two to three month thing, and it's not that your product isn't incredible, that's not the reason we do that. We do it because of a very, very key word, anticipation. I get to build so much anticipation in my dream future buyer over that two to three months. They're thinking about it. They're thinking, and if I've done a good job naming it and positioning it, they're thinking about your product and they've got time to get pumped. You know, it's been proven. Let's say that you're gonna go uh, to Disney, okay? Um, it's been proven that you will have, that you, that you can, if you set it up right, you can have as much excitement and joy from the anticipation of going on a vacation as on the vacation itself. That's key, man, because I'm doing the same thing in launches. They're, they're ex excited, they get the product, the thing's cool, but I can build anticipation and excitement for it. It pretty much doubles your sales, at least makes it far more effective. You make a lot more money because of the anticipation of the thing coming up and that's what we're trying to create. So step number one, push back the launch. Now I alluded to step two here, but what we wanna do is we wanna create a mini event. Let me explain that. Uh, I was speaking at an event, I think it was in Vegas. This was like six or seven years ago. And uh, the guy was trying, he was, he was introducing people. He had an MC and the MC was standing on the side of the stage. And uh, this was the worst MC I've ever seen in my entire life. The guy was like, and now we will now welcome to the stage, St St Steve Larson, who'll be teaching about how, how, he wouldn't even get on the stage. He was standing over on the side of the room and I saw him introducing other people like that. And I was like, oh, like how do you tell someone that they're really bad at their job while still enabling and emboldening them? So I walked up to him and I said, hey man, when you introduce me, like to the nines, brother, you, you just bring on that energy. And he was like, I got you. He did the same thing. And I was like, crap, why is that such a bad deal? Why is that hard for a speaker? The answer is actually one of the reasons why we do launches, okay? An MC, is not about introducing people. I have a MC, his name's Devon Brown, the guy's amazing. He's been an MC for my events for the past few years. And he gets on stage and he'll dance around with people and he gets them excited, but that's not why I hire him. And he knows that's not his real role. His real role is to increase my sales. And what I have him do 
before he brings me on is actually getting people excited about what they're about to learn before I get on and tell people what they're going to learn. If there's a bad MC, it means when I get on stage, I have to spend the next 10 to 15 minutes pre-framing the audience so that I can teach. It actually pushes back the whole event. It makes people not excited to go by. It makes people not future paced like a used car salesman. They get you in the car, imagine driving this car down the street. None of that happens before I get on the stage and it actually jacks with my sales. The same thing happens in a launch. You need a mini event. You need a hype man, okay? You need a hype man. You need to think about your mini event as a hype man. Somebody who builds it up, gets people excited, gets the crowd rolling before the main act comes out on the stage. Same thing is true when you go to any kind of you know, a concert, right? They always have the opening act. That's for a reason. It's not just because they're trying to put another band in there. It's not because they're trying, the reason is because it adds time. It adds anticipation. It pre-frames the brain. What's it gonna be like when the main act comes out? And it actually builds enjoyment. It actually raises enjoyment and joy from the audience. The same thing is true in a launch. While I just said step number one, push back the launch, step number two really is you need to build a mini event. So how do we do that? Right? How do we build a hype man? It really is from this whole idea of putting in a mini event. So I will literally do an event to do that. We'll launch products on the back of an event. Or I'll go get on a podcast interview circuit and I'll try and get myself interviewed 50 to 100 times about the fact my thing's coming up. Right? That's another great way to do it. Or I'll go in and I'll do a seven day launch. I got another YouTube video that teaches that. You should go watch it if you need to know that strategy. Okay? The point is though, is to start looking in your marketplace and ask, how does this market like to launch its products and can I model the same? Step number one, push back the launch. Step number two, you gotta build a hype man for your product or people just aren't gonna be that stoked about it no matter how good your thing is. Before I show you what to do with your cash from the launch, <laughs> I do wanna ask you to like and subscribe uh, to this video. If you guys like this video, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And I also would love to know what's been one of your favorite hype men? <laughs> like an old school hip hop rap days, what's one of your favorite hype men? I would love to know because it's so fun watching what they do. And now that you have that lens, the marketing lens, you'll watch them with a little like, oh, wait a second. What are they really doing to pump up the main act? Really powerful. Now, when I was a kid, there was this video that we would watch about this guy who would see a pump in the middle of a desert, like a water pump. And on the water pump, there was this video, right? There was this little instruction that said like, don't drink the water, use the water to prime the pump. Then you can have all the water you want. The guy's, the guy's dying of dehydration. He chooses to not listen to the note, drinks the priming water and dies. You know what kills businesses online? They drink their primer. There's two types of launches. There is a launch that gets the product out the door, and then there's what we call an evergreen launch, okay? There's a launch campaign and an evergreen campaign. One gets your product in orbit, one keeps it in orbit. And when somebody takes profit from their launch campaign, they drink their primer. What do you do with the cash after you launch a product? Do not take profit. You take the money that the audience has now given you and you dump that into evergreen traffic campaigns. You know how I own all my business without taking on VC funding, no debts, none of the classic entrepreneurship models? It's because I launch and the launch gives me cash and I take that cash and go put it in Facebook ads. Then I get paid from that, okay? Don't drink your primer. It'll kill you faster than anything else. It's one of the fastest classic entrepreneurial mistakes. Those were brand new, okay? When you go do a big launch and you, right, you push back the launch and you create a hype man and you do a little mini event and people come in, whoa, look at all this cash that comes in. Don't fool yourself by thinking it's gonna be like that 24 seven. It most likely will not. Box office weekend doesn't happen two weekends. It happens once. So we take that the equivalent of box office weekend cash and we go dump it in evergreen traffic strategies that are slower cash, okay? but they're evergreen dripped and they come slow and steady and that's what pays me and a team. That's what pays an office for me. That's what built our studio. That's what built all the stuff. It's not launch, 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 launch. That's exhausting and it's literally called a launch business as a negative, right? Don't do that. So when you go launch, you take that cash and you dump that cash, the profits, into evergreen stuff. Evergreen, okay, content creation, Facebook ads, right? Um, those kinds of things that are slower cash, but that's where you actually get paid as an entrepreneur.
Hey, I got a free gift for you. I know I'm saying a lot of stuff. There's some deep strategies that will really help you in this path though. Go to internetlaunchsecrets.com and you can watch a free presentation on how I actually launch products. I alluded to the formula in this video, but the rest of it is in that video for free at internetlaunchsecrets.com.